Welcome to Rufo with Trinity Gask and Kim Kill Parish Church for our service this morning. And today it's our harvest service for the 4th of October. We're going to enjoy the singing group with two songs, All Around Me Lord and Oh Give Thanks. The words will be on the screen, you're welcome to join in. And then singing from a church hymn, then we're going to think of a world without any flowers. As part of the service we'll be thinking about a short history of harvest. A reading from the scripture comes from Leviticus chapter 26 verses 1 to 13 and we're going to think about harvest and God's creation as well as having prayers of thanksgiving and prayers for others during the course of this service. Hope you enjoy the service. join together in prayer and I'd invite you to respond after I say the words we bring our thanks good Lord would you say your mercy endures forever let's pray let's give thanks to God the God of all peoples of the earth for the color and forms of your creation and our place within it we bring our thanks good Lord your mercy endures forever. For our daily food, and for those whose work and skill bring your good gifts to us, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For the gifts and graces inspired in human minds and hearts, for insight and imagination, for the skills of research which bring healing and fulfilment to the lives of many, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For the light and shades of the changing seasons and their variety and dependability, for a new life and growth out of barrenness and decay, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever for new hope and strength in our communities, especially in your church and among all who you call to serve you. We bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For all in whose lives we see goodness, kindness, gentleness, patience and humility and all the fruit of the Spirit, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever for the life we have been given, and for all those whom you have given us to share it, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. Let's pray together now in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 
If you're interested in the meaning and the origin of words, you'll be interested to know that the word harvest comes from a very old Anglo-Saxon word called uh, herfest. And you can almost hear echoes of it in the modern German word herbst. And it really simply meant autumn, that particular season of the year between August and November. It was only much later on that the word autumn came in, uh, about the 15th or 16th century, and autumn then became that season of the year. And that was when harvest became much more narrowly focused on the ingathering of crops, on what we call the harvest, the corn, the wheat, the neeps, the tatties, the carrots, and all that goes to the modern harvest. But whatever words you use, harvest festivals clearly have been around for a long time, as long as there have been harvests, because particularly for rural and agricultural economies and communities, harvest was the most important time of the year. It meant that you had enough to, to, to eat over the winter and enough to then sow again in the spring for the next year. We call the, the full moon in this time of year the harvest moon. It was always the, the full moon nearest the autumn equinox. The autumn equinox is the 22nd of September. This year the moon will actually be quite late. It will be on the 1st of October, which is quite unusual for the harvest moon to be in October. Different cultures and different lands celebrated harvest obviously in different ways. Very often it ended up, of course, with a big harvest supper, enjoying the fruits of the, the ground and all the things that had been gathered. And there would be singing, there would be dancing, there might well be a lot of drinking, and quite often echoes of pagan and heathen festivities going back a long way. The modern uh, church celebration of harvest doesn't go back a long way. It only goes back actually to 1843. A minister called the Reverend Robert Hawker invited his parishioners to a special thanksgiving service in his church in Morvinstow in Cornwall. And it's only really since then that churches and Christians have been singing hymns like we plough the fields and scatter. Come you thankful people, come. All things bright and beautiful. And the custom, of course, of decorating, decorating the church with, with flowers and the fruits which make up our Harvest Thanksgiving Festival. Our reading this morning is from Leviticus, chapter 26, verses 1 to 13, and the reading is taken from the New International Version of the Bible. Do not make idols or set up an image or a sacred stone for yourselves, and do not place a carved stone in your land to bow down before it. I am the Lord your God. Observe my Sabbaths and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you rain in its season and the ground will yield its crops and the trees their fruit. Your threshing will continue until grape harvest and the grape harvest will continue until planting and you will eat all the food you want and live in safety in your land. I will grant peace in the land, and you will lie down, and no one will make you afraid. I will remove wild beasts from the land, and the sword will not pass through your country. You will pursue your enemies, and they will fall by the sword before you. Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand, and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. I will look on you with favour and make you fruitful and increase your numbers, and I will keep my covenant with you. You will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to move it out to make room for the new. I will put my dwelling place among you, and I will not abhor you. I will walk among you and be your God, 
and you will be my people. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt so that you would no longer be slaves to the Egyptians. I broke the bars of your yoke and enabled you to walk with heads held high. Amen. May God bless to us this reading of his holy word, and to his name be the glory and praise. Imagine you're a tree. Maybe you remember falling out of the branches as a little acorn landing on the ground and a squirrel picked you up and buried you somewhere nearby. In the spring, you felt life stirring within and you put a little shoot up above the ground into the air. The sun warmed you. The rain refreshed your green leaves. The soil fed your hungry roots and they reached and stretched deeper and deeper down into the ground. As the years went by, you grew and grew and grew until you towered above all the other shrubs and flowers in the forest. You could feel the squirrels tickling you as they climbed up and down your trunk. You could hear the gentle breath of the deer as they grazed underneath. You swayed but stood firm in the winter gales. You are home to hundreds of insects and birds, literally a city in the sky for a whole ecosystem. You are what God made you, and in being what you are, you glorify your maker. Imagine you're a flower. You're one of a whole sea of daisies in the meadow. You open up your petals to the sun in the morning. You close them again in the cool of the evening. You're surrounded by other flowers, some bigger, some smaller. But your white stands out among all the many other colours. The wind gently nods your head. There's a buzz of insects. Bees follow the scent on the breeze and feed on your nectar. The beetles scurry about at your feet. You are what God made you to be. And in being what you are, you glorify your maker. Now imagine you're a carrot. You are sown in a huge field and carefully tended, fed, protected from insects and the worst of the elements. And part of you is snug in the soil and only the green fronds above the ground know if it's even day or night. But then one day you're plucked out of the ground, into the light, into the air, thrown into a container with thousands of others just like you. You're washed, you're cleaned, you're taken hither and thither on conveyor belts and tractors and trailers and machines and lorries and finally you're placed in the bright shelf of a supermarket. And a lady picks you up and says, that's a fine carrot, just perfect for my soup tonight. You are what God made you to be. And being what you are, you glorify your maker. Imagine you're a blackbird. You hatch in a warm, cosy nest deep in the thick hedge. You can't see anything, but you feel other wriggling bodies beside you. You hear a noise, and without knowing why, you open your beak wide as you can up to the sky, and something soft and moist is put in it. You swallow, and you know it's good. Quickly you grow. You can see and hear, and one day, without any explanation whether you were pushed or whether you jumped, you fell out of the nest, flapped your wings, and flew. You followed your mother or father, see what they do pecking in the ground and you do it and you find worms and seeds, a bird table and life is good. So you sit on a branch and sing your heart out. You are what God made you to be and in being what you are, you glorify your maker. You don't have to imagine you are a human being, you are a human being. You feel the same sun as the daisy, feel the same rain as the acorn. 
You're sustained by what grows in the ground as food and other creatures too give their lives so you can eat. But you alone are made in the image of God. You see and hear and understand things that no other creature understands. You are God's representative in this world, made in his image, to do the things God would do if he were here himself. But he is here himself in you. Like God, you have creative power to form, to shape so many things around you out of wood and stone and clay, to imagine stories and pictures and music and fantastic worlds. You have a ruling power to subdue every other creature and even to claim a limited mastery over the powers of nature and some of the elements. You have an emotional power to know and feel and express love. You also have the power to rule badly, selfishly, to destroy, to unleash evil, even to defy the one who made you. The good humans we all potentially are was demonstrated most fully in the life of the best human who ever lived, Jesus. And the evil we, in fact, do was concentrated in the dreadful event of the cross. And the new creation offered to each of us through repentance and faith in him is possible because of his resurrection. Because God wants us to be his children. Are you what God made you to be? And in what you are, do you glorify your maker? Amen. Let's bring to God now our prayers for others. And I would invite you to respond with the words, Hear our prayer after I say, Lord of life, or something similar. Let's pray. Let us offer our prayers to God for the life of the world, and for all God's people in their daily life and work. God, the beginning and end of all things, in your providence and care, you watch unceasingly over all creation. We offer our prayers 
that in us and in all your people your will may be done, according to your wise and loving purpose in Christ our Lord. Lord of all life, hear our prayer. We pray for all through whom we receive sustenance and life, for farmers and agricultural workers, for packers, distributors and company boards, as you have so ordered our life that we depend upon each other, enable us by your grace to seek the well-being of others before our own. Lord of all creation, hear our prayer. We pray for all engaged in research to safeguard crops against disease and to produce abundant life among those who hunger and whose lives are at risk. Prosper the work of their hands and the searching of their minds, that their labour may be for the welfare of all. Lord of all wisdom, hear our prayer. We pray for governments and aid agencies, and those areas of the world where there is disaster, drought and starvation. By the grace of your Spirit, touch our hearts and the hearts of all who live in comfortable plenty and make us wise stewards of your gifts. Lord of all justice, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill, remembering those in hospital and nursing homes and all who are known to us. We pray for all who care for them, give skill and understanding to all who work for their well-being. Especially grant those researching in the area of COVID-19 success and progress in treatments and vaccines. Lord of all compassion, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, whom we entrust to your eternal love and the hope of resurrection to new life. Lord of all peace, hear our prayer. We offer ourselves to your service, asking that by the Spirit at work in us, others may receive a rich harvest of love and joy and peace. Lord of all faithfulness, hear our prayer. God of grace, as you are ever at work in your creation, so fulfil your wise and loving purpose in us and in all for whom we pray that with them and in all that you have made, your glory may be revealed and the whole earth give praise to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
And now may God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is a source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon you, his children, that you may use his gifts to his glory and the welfare of all peoples. The blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and for evermore. Amen.